Today we are replacing these two extremely worn out steering tie rod ends on my son's 2009 Ford Fusion. Let's get started. All right, so here we are, we're uh, replacing this tie rod end. This ball joint here has uh, worn out. I got the new one here. This is a 2009 Ford Fusion. It's my son's car. He's not very mechanically inclined, even though I try to push him. So this project, I'm taking care of myself. We got a stop nut up here. We need to get this broke loose. Hopefully this stuff is not too rusted okay that came loose pretty good i'm only going to back that off a little bit because I, I don't have an alignment rack so when the new part goes on i need to get it pretty much the same place where this one is that way it can be driven driven to uh a, a, you know a shop to get the alignment done uh, without tearing the tires up too much so this little nut here this is metric actually this is 17 millimeters. Let me get this off. I've had this off a couple times when we replaced the CB shafts, so yeah, it's gonna come off. The whole thing's spinning in there, so crud, I need to get a pair of pliers on this thing or something. Looking like it's gonna pretty much fall apart. That's nice. Many times in the past I've had to put a lot of heat on these things to get them to come apart. Spin on me. battle there that was the easiest I've ever taken one of those apart so now we got to spin the actual tie rod end off let's see if this is gonna fight yeah it's one of the ones where it spins up here it's not like uh, locked in or anything so I gotta get a vice grip or something Actually, that's... Let's see if I can get this in here in a way where... I don't know if these are... These are right-hand th right threads? Yeah, they are right-hand threads. So let's get that snug back up right there. So I know how far to put the next one on. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Okay. 
That's off. This is the part that's bad. You see the rubber boots going, and that ball joint is loose, really loose. It's all pretty worn out. It, there's still some life in it. I mean, you could drive this for a long time, but this is my kid's car, and he's lucky if he remembers to change the oil, so we'll get the right part on there. There's a cotter pin in there somewhere. Didn't need that. The old one didn't have one on there. Okay. This one's nice and tight. Alright, so I didn't move this nut hardly at all. So that'll save us so we can get it to the alignment rack. So I'm going to screw right up to where this nut is. And then just tighten it back down. is let's get this crescent wrench out of here then this goes right into here gotta kind of get it oriented properly or at least close Okay, here's our new castle nut. Before I go any further, I'm going to tighten this nut down here before I forget. Okay, let's see if this is the same size as the one that came off. It sure enough is. Pretty much what you get for parts made in China. This part fits a, a multitude of vehicles, I'm sure. And if you can't tell, that hole where the cotter pin goes is way, way high. Why is that? That's the old one. Well, I'm gonna make it work. So. Line that up right there. This is a this is my son's beater car for going to college, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Look at that's just nuts. And there's no other hole down here, which you would think it would have if it was like a universal type unit. Yeah, there's nothing, that's it. Let's get all the way tightened up right there. How do we make sure this cotter pin does the job of a cotter pin? Well, actually, it doesn't have to necessarily be in the slots of the castle nut. I just got to wrap it around, then that way the nut will never come off. That's some redneck engineering right there, which is not good in a way, because if this thing loosens up and that tapered shaft starts to loosen up, then it's just going to start wearing out this arm right here. But it's a beater car. It'll work. All right, so scratch that thought. I, I, I can't let this go. We, we got to fix it right. So we're going to go ahead and get this cotter pin out of here. And we're going to drill a new hole 
right there. That way it is 100% the way it should be. That's going to be a lot better. That's going to lock things into the right spot. All right, I'm a lot more comfortable with that. Now, now I'll actually call this side done. And now we're gonna go and switch over to the passenger side of the vehicle and get a new tie rod on that side as well. All right, here we are on the passenger side. This side should go, hopefully, about the same as the other side. First thing I gotta do is get this lock nut loosened up. Okay, that was tighter than the other side. Maybe this side's gonna be a pickle. I don't know. Just a little bit there. So we can try to keep the alignment halfway decent in between this repair and taking it to the alignment rack at the, at the shop. All right, let's get this nut off of here. This one seems kind of tight in here, so I'm going to hopefully just raise this nut up a little bit and hit it with a hammer and knock it out. That one's pretty tight in there. You can hear how loose that ball joint is, though. Hear that clicking sound? Oops, hit the camera. Starting to mushroom that nut over a little bit. Okay. Looks like we gotta put some heat right there. All right, got some map gas here. We're gonna heat up this part right here to make it grow a little bit and get a little bit bigger so the taper shaft can fall out of there.
that's enough. There we go. Bingo. We're gonna let that cool off and then I'll come back in a few minutes. All right, things have cooled off enough. Let me go ahead and get this apart. Still a little bit warm, but I think we can get it. I beat that thing up with a hammer too much. Time for a crescent wrench. Okay, we got that off. Now, what was it? Was it the 19 millimeter that goes on there? Yep. Sure enough is. And the big crescent wrench we can put over here. Let's see if we can get this apart. Seems to be coming. Looking good. Get that out of there. This is still pretty warm. Heat transferred up here too. It's kind of warm up there. Got that off. Here's the new part. This one actually has a shorter tapered shaft. So I might not have to drill that one out. Let's go ahead and get this screwed on here. Ooh, that's awful close. Let's back it this way and tighten that up, nut up later. Yeah, alignment's gonna be out of whack. Definitely gotta hit the alignment rack. Okay, that's in there. There's the castle nut. Do I have a wrench that fits that? Sure enough, do. Boy, I might have to drill this one too. Oh yeah, I'm definitely loving these made in China parts. You gotta modify them every time. 
Yep, I definitely have to drill this one. So we'll go ahead and get this thing nice and snug and then drill it out. Just a little bit further. We'll put a hole right through here. You gotta be kidding me. I broke the bit off. This ain't good. But actually, it's sticking out the other side. Perfect. That'll work as a cutter pin. I'm gonna put the other cutter pin up on top just in case. Well, it ain't something. It's one thing, it's another. But at least that bit. Is sticking out the other side I can feel it so just for safety I'm gonna stick this cotter pin here that way it can't come all the way off should that bit break and we got to tighten this one up There we go. Get the tools out of the way, put the tires back on. Good to go, just gotta take it to the alignment shop. Get on the rack and make sure the toe in is good to go so we don't tear up any of these new tires that are on here. Yeah, I think it'll work out just fine for a college student beater car.